Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Brian O'Neill. And it's Wednesday, August the 15th. Glad to have with us today Alfred State History Professor Dr. Nick Wadi. Dr. Wadi, thank you for joining us. Brian, it's always an honor and a pleasure. Well, looking at um, your website, uh, you had an article you posted on Friday about uh, the uh, leftists. Why do so many leftists reject America? The article was called America the Ugly, and it was about the uh, Antifa-type protests that are out there these days. Now, Tucker Carlson recently commented on them, and... Um, First up, he talked about the, uh, and this was on the Fox News Channel, he talked about the white supremacist rally in Washington, D.C., which drew a total of 21 people. Here's what Tucker said. Incredibly rare. You could easily live your entire life in this country without meeting a single person who believes anything like that. Most of us have lived lives like that. I have. In fact, this is a generous, tolerant country. It always has been that. People who tell you otherwise are either delusional or trying to control you with fear, likely both. In the end yesterday, just a couple of dozen people showed up out of a country of 320 million people. First off, your reaction uh, to uh, Tucker's analysis of, uh, you know, there was a lot of media hype about this rally and then less than two dozen people showed up. Well, Tucker is absolutely right, as usual. I mean, there's there's a tremendous focus on the on the left on uh, any sort of of white racism. The the narrative of of racism that the that the left wants to perpetuate is that racism is a thing that white people do to black people. There is no other form of racism, and that racism is is increasing. And you know, we, we can we can measure people's degree of racial antipathy, and there's no doubt that that uh, racial attitudes have become much more liberal, much more tolerant in the last few decades. But as I discuss in my article, among other things, there's this perception on the left, and unfortunately, there's a pretty wide perception because the left controls the media, that racism is increasing, and um, it's just not true. The sad part is that it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy because when you create this narrative that that uh, the different races are are at loggerheads and and you're scaring the heck out of the non-whites is what they're doing. Those uh, white supremacist attitudes have become extremely rare. I've I've gone through life as a, a fairly middle-class, ordinary white person, and I've never w met a white supremacist, and I don't know anyone who has. Um, Talking with Alfred State history professor Dr. Nick Waddy. Dr. Waddy, um, the uh, controversial uh, FBI agent uh, um, Peter Strzok was uh, fired by the FBI. Did you have any reaction to that? Well, you know, I guess my main reaction is yeah, he did some very unprofessional things, and you you could argue that he's probably done more damage to the FBI and the uh, the integrity of our justice system than anyone for a very long time. Um, Republicans uh, have uh, have a sense, and and for good reason, that President Trump was was set up, and that a lot of people in the Obama administration. In the Clinton campaign and in uh, high levels of the uh, Justice Department and FBI, were um, uh, cooking up this this conspiracy theory of of, of uh, Russia collusion, and um, and he was clearly gunning for President Trump and and, and wanting to use his uh, his powers to to prevent Trump from becoming president and to damage Trump as president. And you know now he's he's. Uh, He's a private citizen, and he's free to to uh, vent his spleen and criticize Trump as much as he wants. He will. Now he's an anti-Trump celebrity. He's already capitalizing on that. And, um, you know, this is where we are. Um, this is America. He's free to do that. But, um, you know, people like him don't belong in the FBI, and I'm, I'm glad he was fired. We're talking with uh, Alfred State history professor Dr. Nick Wadi. Uh, Dr. Wadi, uh, President Trump visited uh, Watertown and Utica, and um, he was very critical of both Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo. The governor had sent out 
one of, I guess I would call the usual Cuomo welcome to New York emails, which was very critical of the Trump administration. Trump uh, responded by slamming the governor uh, while he was visiting Utica, criticizing the governor for uh, banning hydrofracking. And uh, the governor uh, responded by saying that uh, President Trump is tight with the NRA, National Rifle Association. Well, an interesting development came out of that because during uh, uh, Trump's speech, the president said that uh, Governor Cuomo actually called him, uh, President Trump in Washington, and said he would not run while Trump is in office. And then uh, Cynthia Nixon, the governor's uh, Democrat hopeful uh, uh, opponent there, who the governor's going to be primarying in uh, less than a month now, Cynthia Nixon uh, sent out an email saying, why won't Cuomo discuss this conversation with Trump? Any thoughts there, Dr. Wadi? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, you know, one of the big stories that, that came out recently from my perspective is that Governor Cuomo has agreed to debate Cynthia Nixon, and that is a very un-Cuomo-like thing to do. Um, I think it, it demonstrates that he's worried about... Um, about losing the Democratic primary, and um, and maybe he should be. Uh, I don't think it's very likely, but but anything's possible. Um, did Cuomo give Trump such an assurance? I don't know. I, I, I but um, you know, Trump has basically taunted Cuomo, saying he wishes Cuomo would run, and frankly, I do too. I think it'd be wonderful. <laughs> I think Cuomo would be a disaster as a national candidate. He's uh, he's a pretty good disaster as a governor. I mean, he's he's very lucky that he's governor of one of the bluest states in the union because otherwise uh, he would have been gone a long time ago. Now, uh, something that Republican candidate for governor uh, Mark Molinaro and Governor Andrew Cuomo are both uh, making an issue of is uh, New York City subway riders. Uh, uh, beating up MTA workers uh, on the subway in New York City. The uh, headline from uh, WPIX 11 uh, talks about subway riders beating up conductors in an attack caught on video. Mark Molinaro, um, the Republican candidate for governor, uh, faulted Governor Andrew Cuomo for policies which Molinaro maintains led to this. Uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo said, quote, the recent assaults on MTA workers are sickening and will not be tolerated. The men and women of the TWU Local 100 make the subway run and deserve to do their jobs with respect. Now, that, that I think catches the attention of a lot of people around here because everybody knows that a lot of the subway cars in New York City are made uh, locally by uh, Alstom workers in Hornell, and I, I tend to follow, and I think others do too, the uh, subway issues in New York City a little closer than we would otherwise uh, because of the uh, Alstom connection. Did you have any thoughts on uh, this new development, Dr. Wadi? Well, I, I suppose the obvious thing that crosses my mind and that probably crosses a lot of other minds is that uh, Andrew Cuomo and, and a lot of Democrats are very selective in their their um, their respect for authority. You know, there's there's another uh, um, uh, governmental authority, uh, ICE, which which is charged with enforcing the law vis-a-vis -vis federal immigration uh, policies. And he, he could not have less respect for them, and he could not be more eager to impede the uh, execution of their duties. So um, I'm, I'm all for respect for, for governmental authority, respect for law and order, respect for law enforcement. Uh, but I think it should be consistent. And you, honestly, you won't find me bad-mouthing the FBI as an institution. I think the FBI, there are people in the FBI who who largely have been fired, and that's great. And there, there are excesses in, in any governmental organization or law enforcement organization. But, but um, at the end of the day, you know, we live in a society of laws, and, and I think we have a duty to uh, respect um, people who work for the government in any capacity, but especially law enforcement. So I'm glad he's taking that position, but he should do so more often. After all, he is the, the uh, chief executive of the state of New York. On the governor's race, uh, Mark Molinaro says that the Cuomo campaign for re-election in the governor's race 
is trying to define Mark Molinaro as an ultra-conservative and a Trump mini-me and uh, anti-women, anti-immigration, ex- and etc. Uh, Molinaro says uh, he would, if elected governor, uh, enforce the law on abortion. He said he wouldn't expand to late-term abortions. But Molinaro says he wouldn't try to get rid of, uh, or maintains he wouldn't try to get rid of uh, Roe v. Wade in uh, New York State. And Molinaro also says that uh, he wouldn't go near the uh, LBGTQ uh, and gay marriage issue. Your thoughts on that back and forth from uh, Governor Cuomo and Mark Molinaro? Well, I think it's it's typical Cuomo and, and typical uh, for for any Democratic candidate to try to to paint the his Republican opponent as a as a right wing extremist. It's, it's politics as usual, and it's not like people on the right don't don't do similar things to people on the left. But uh, unfortunately, I think we sort of come full circle because the standard playbook for a Democrat or a liberal running for office is to either state baldly or imply that his opponent is a racist and to to exploit racial divisions and to exploit uh, uh, racial mistrust to to create this impression that the Republican Party is a racist and white supremacist organization. So I expect you'll see that as as one of Governor Cuomo's main arguments going into the fall. And unfortunately, it won't be the first time. Alfred State History Professor Dr. Nick Wadi is our guest today. Going to take a quick break. We'll be back. Stay with us. As of August 1st, hunting licenses will be on sale at Louis Gun Shop in Bath. Purchase your hunting license at Louis Gun Shop in Bath and get a coupon for 5% off your ammo. Good for the rest of August. So don't wait. Stop in to Louis Gun Shop anytime after August 1st and purchase your hunting license and get a 5% coupon to use on their huge selection of ammo. Louis Gun Shop on Westmore Street in Bath. Stop in and check out all their great hunting products. Louis Gun Shop. Get your bang on. Checking in with meteorologist Rob Carolyn. Rob, is it going to be nicer today? Oh, much nicer, Brian. No rain in the forecast for at least today. Uh, Unfortunately, we've got rain in the forecast for tomorrow afternoon. We've got one storm system getting kicked out of eastern New England. That's the one that brought the rain to us yesterday. They had some pretty significant flooding down around Watkins Glen yesterday from that storm. The new one that's helping to boot the old one out, it's down across Missouri this morning, parts of Illinois, seeing some heavy rain on into Indiana and western Kentucky. That's going to track through the Ohio River Valley tomorrow up into the Great Lakes for Friday, and it does look like it brings us some scattered showers and storms but today we're quiet in between the two systems we'll enjoy sunshine it's going to be warm humid 85 to 90. brian sunrise this morning was at 6 18. the sun will set tonight at 8 11. we're partly cloudy overnight lows will be somewhere between 65 and 70 for tomorrow any sun early in the day will give way to clouds we'll see showers and thunderstorms tomorrow highs 80 to 85. Tomorrow night, scattered showers and storms lows near 70 and friday mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms around 80 but we should see improvement just in time for the upcoming weekend. Talking with Alfred State History Professor Dr. Nick Waddy. Dr. Waddy, uh, um, I, 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 I'm guessing you follow the Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez uh, race. The latest in that is that the uh, downstate uh, candidate for uh, uh, governor on the Democrat side who won the Democrat primary uh, beating uh, uh, Congressman Joe Crowley down there downstate, uh, Cortez was invited to do a debate with uh, Ben Shapiro, the uh, Westwood One radio host. And uh, Alexandria Arsicio Cortez says, quote, I don't owe a response to unsolicited requests from men with bad intentions. She says, like catcalling, for some reason uh, they feel entitled uh, to uh, a response. She says she's not going to give one. Did you have any thoughts there? Well, I think it's quite obvious that her response is sexist. And among the reasons she doesn't want to talk to Ben Shapiro is that he's a man, and, and, and as a man, he must have bad intentions. He may have bad intentions for her. I'm sure he's, he's, he's wanting to embarrass her, but he wants to do that, that in, the, in the context of open debate, and the fact that he's a man has absolutely nothing to do with it. This is the sort of casual prejudice that exists um, uh, on a very large scale on the left, unfortunately. And what's what's unfortunate is that the media 
will jump all over any conservative or Republican who shows the faintest whisper of prejudice. But but this sort of uh, casual prejudice on on the left is uh, is ignored, and it, it shouldn't be. She she uh, she should be ashamed to say something like that. Dr. Wadi, uh, Dr. Robert Heinemann, the Alfred University uh, political science uh, professor emeritus, seems to think that uh, Crowley getting on the uh, women's equality line uh, could help Crowley uh, get back into the race and win. Heinemann maintains that uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez uh, was not as strong as a candidate as her supporters maintain that Crowley did not uh, bother campaigning because he underestimated her, but that the uh, voter turnout was low in that part of the state. D do you think there's a chance of defeating uh, Cortez uh, by the uh, incumbent there, Congressman Crowley? Well, I, I don't know a lot about the district, but from what I've heard, it's a very, very Democratic district. So um, the person on the Democratic line would be heavily favored. It would also be a question of where the money goes. Um, you know, if the Democratic Party were really embarrassed by Cortez, and I don't get the sense that they are, quite frankly, and I don't think they would turn on her. But if they did and, and, and the big money flowed to Crowley, Crowley could win. We've seen things like that happen before. There was a Senate election in Alaska not long ago where the write-in candidate won. So anything's possible. But I think it's highly unlikely, given the complexion of that district. I think she's going to be a congressman. And I think that's great because um, she helps to expose the Democratic Party as a, as a party of socialism. And I think in the long run, that's, that's not going to work out well for them. Dr. Wadi, new Rasmussen poll came out uh, on uh, Tuesday, and it says that uh, half of likely voters in the U.S. approve of Trump's uh, job performance, 49% disapprove, and uh, the same poll said 39% said the uh, Mueller investigation should come to an end. 43% say the U.S. is heading in the right direction these days. What do you make of these uh, poll results? Well, you got to wonder who would be unsatisfied with this economy, who would be unsatisfied with this unemployment rate. You know, I, I know people who have gotten jobs in, in the last year and a half, and uh, and sometimes they were unemployed for a long time. So this this has a real impact on people's lives. And, you know, of course, the media is going to undercut it as much as humanly possible. But, you know, I, and I think that's that's the takeaway from these polls. Trump's numbers should be should be much higher than they are. He's he's performed well, uh, not only on the economy, but on a, on a lot of other fronts. And um, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. And, you know, I, I watched a little of. Uh, Rachel Maddow the other night, and it strikes me that that anyone who gets their their news, their information from from say NBC, um, is is going to have a completely warped perspective of, of what's going on in the world and what's going on in this country and of President Trump. So, unfortunately, his numbers just aren't going to go much higher until the media uh, undergoes some sort of revolutionary self-transformation and that's not going to happen you just touched on a point i wanted to bring up kellyanne conway's name on kellyanne conway uh, advisor to the president she got jumped on and she kind of misspoke originally when she said uh, she was being asked a question and she wasn't uh in the loop on the answer and she said something about an alternative set of facts and a lot of the press jumped on her and said you know as if there's only one uh side of the story or one set of facts you just touched on something, you know, people who watch NBC have one view. Uh, the rest of that statement is the people who watch Fox have a different view. I don't remember it, uh, the coverage ever being so different or divided as it is today between the left or right. Do you? No, I think it has become more extreme. It, it's it's uh, There's been a, a bias in the mainstream media for a very long time. You can trace it all the way back to the to the 60s, certainly. Um, but it, you know, the, the negative of the, the, the level of negative coverage that President Trump has gotten is unprecedented, and that's, that's just an objective fact. Um, so 
But but I think it's important to remember that the greatest power that any media organization has is not to report the news. It is to not report the news that they don't want people to be thinking about and talking about. That ability to omit things is is extremely powerful and important, and the media exercises it all the time. Um, so that that shapes the way people see the world, and it's not surprising to me that people who listen to the mainstream media disapprove of Trump. Uh, it's it's inevitable. Dr. Wani, uh, we are out of time. I want to thank you very much, uh, as always, for joining us. Thank you, Brian. Have a wonderful week.